Well, I've been doing a little checking here, and it's, it's an optical illusion. This front end here of the arm, the left side to me, which is actually the front. This is the left arm, driver's side. So this is the front with the bump stop under here. This side is significantly bigger. It leads to an optical illusion that it's longer. But when I uh, got in here with the uh, square, I actually used a different one or whatever, but uh, when I got in here with a square and I marked the middle of that and came up, the center of this ball joint hole lines up with the center of the cross shaft. Okay, so the length of these two is the same. All right, then I uh, did some measuring here, and granted that other one's in the way there a bit, but uh, where it's sitting at right now, it's dead center is, you know, closer to seven and three eighths. But the reality is, is that. Uh, the ball joint sits at an angle, so as it comes down at an angle, the mounting point to the spindle, where the taper shaft actually goes in, that's going to be basically seven and a half inches. Okay, really freaking close to that. So I'm using that as my distance here, and I've got this set for really close to seven and a half. I measured the, got the center of the thing there of the cross shaft. And when this comes up, I've got this set up to be really, really close to, to center there, okay? And what I'm getting at is trying to measure these turnbuckles. If you can see that, there's just a, a little bit of play there, meaning I can shorten these up just a little, oh, excuse me, just a little bit more. But my understanding is, is, you know, a lot of the guys are running lowered trucks, okay? That's part of the reason why they want these. You know, if they're drifting and stuff like that, they're... Uh, running lowered trucks, lowered suspensions, and stuff like that. With that being the case, when they're lowered, evidently they pull in a lot more negative camber, and so they need these longer. Not being able to make this shorter shouldn't be an issue. And quite honestly, the reality is, is that if the stock arm is exactly where they need it or want it, then they're not going to be buying this arm anyway. They're going to be just running with the stock arm. Um, if if it needs to be pulled back and maintained at the same seven and a half, these will probably have to be shortened up a bit. And I got a feeling what I'm going to do is let them go out at least the first five or so, uh, at least the first few that get mounted up. I want to find out exactly where guys are having them set. And they can grind an eighth inch, quarter inch off to shorten these up. They can take take a uh, cutoff wheel you know, and lop off a quarter inch off each side uh, without any problem and be able to pull that in just a little bit more. Um, but it does meet factory positioning with where it's at. And I kind of hate to shorten it because if they do actually want to pull the ball joint out and lengthen it, the more meat we leave on here to begin with, the better. Okay. Uh, with here, same thing. I'm going to switch this out to be a five inch turnbuckle just so that it goes out that much further has that much more meat in it. It's been brought up about 4x4s and I don't know anything about the 4x4 geometry. Um, I know guys are running these with drop shocks on two-wheel drives and lowered and the ball joint angles seem to be fine. Okay, I, I don't know about that. I basically signed on to this to do the cross shaft to build a better cross shaft specifically designed to fit the truck. All the rest of this geometry is more than I actually bargained for. Uh, my thought going into this was that I was going to provide the cross shaft and all of this stuff could just be bought off the shelf and you guys could get whatever you wanted. That way you could get exactly the ball joint you wanted. You know, you could buy the AFCO one instead of the Speedway, ball joint housing, clevis, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And we'll see what happens. It may come down to that. If these don't sell well enough, I am not going to stockpile all this... Uh, hardware because all of this hardware together adds up to way more than the cross shaft. Oh, back to where I was at though, the 4x4s. I don't know ball joint angle wise, okay, on a 4x4 if if there's too much angle like this you can get 772 custom Moog ball joints, uh, and actually not Moog but uh, custom aftermarket ball joints that have a really long tapered rod, whatever the hell that's called, 
it's the spindle of the ball joint maybe and and that would lift it back up you know into the range where it needs to be so if somebody knows more about that awesome please uh let me know it's good news not having to make custom turnbuckles the only piece i have to make is this piece that's really the only piece i actually wanted to make <laughs> there's not a whole lot of incentive dollars <laughs> involved in me bringing all this in just to pass it on and ship it back out the door i have you know i have to do all the the ordering and blah 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 if i can't buy them in quantities to save some money on the quantity same thing with the shipping then there's zero incentive you know for me to provide all the rest of this i'll just make the cross shaft make it available put it out there and everybody can just order all their own stuff